So this is activity 1.3.3, .3, constraining a sketch. So far, while you are making sketches in Autodesk Fusion, you've been adding dimensional constraints. And by doing so, you are defining how long or how tall or how wide or how deep something is. Now, constraining sketches in Autodesk Fusion could also be done using geometric constraints. And by doing so, it ensures that the sketch lines move as expected, especially when you're editing parts or dimensions. Okay, constraining sketches can help to maintain precision and then reduce errors. And since you're reducing errors, it could save time. So for this assignment, you will need to go on to activity 1.3.3, constraining a sketch and download the geometric constraining activity. So click on that folder. That folder will open and then you have an F3D here. So a fusion file that you need to download. So click on the three dots and then download. And once you've downloaded it, okay, so open a new canvas on Autodesk Fusion and then click upload, select files, and then from your downloads folder or wherever it went to, click geometric constraining.f3d. So upload it. Okay, once uploaded, you'll get a notification here. It'll say that the export of the geometric constraining that F3D uh, is, um, is done. And so you just need to open the design. So click open design. And then this is what you're going to see. So this is just a sketch. Okay, so if I click here in the browser, you'll see that there's no bodies, only sketches only a sketch diamond. So uh, double click on the sketch in order for you to open the sketch. And you know that it's open because you have your sketch palette open. And while you're in sketch mode, you'll notice that uh, the menu up here changed to provide you with all the sketch tools and also the, the geometric constraints. So like I said, there are two types of constraints. One is the dimensional constraint, and then the other one are the geometric constraints. So um, the following are your geometric constraints. And if you leave your mouse hovering on each tool, you'll see that you have the horizontal vertical constraint. You have the coincident constraint, tangent constraint, equal, parallel, perpendicular, fix, unfix, midpoint, concentric, collinear, symmetry, and curvature. So we'll be using all of these except for the curvature one. Uh, we ra rarely use this in our assignments here in Intro to Engineering Design. So, but let's zoom in to the first one and it says make perpendicular. So as you can see, you have two lines and to make it perpendicular means the angle between these two lines need to be 90 degrees. And you'll see that there's a triangle right here, which means this line is directly in the midpoint of this line right here. So to make this perpendicular all you have to do is click perpendicular constraint click on one line and then click on the next line and as you can see there is now the perpendicular symbol um, showing after you've done that operation all right um, next uh, you have make all three lines parallel to one another so we're going to use the parallel constraint which is this and let's say this is the um, angle of the line that we want the other lines to be at. So I click here first 
so that the next line that I click will copy the angle of this line. And I'll do the same thing again, click here, and then click again here. And as you can see now, uh, you have those parallel constraints. If I press escape on my keyboard, I lose selection on the parallel constraint. I could still move this, but as you can see, it's always parallel to the first one. There's no way for me to rotate this in any other fashion. So um, what if I want to remove a constraint? So to remove a constraint, all you have to do is click on that constraint, that geometric constraint, right click and then press delete. And as you can see, I've deleted it. Or I could also click on that constraint and on my keyboard press delete, I could delete it again. So I'm going to hit Control Z or Command Z on the Mac in order for me to get those constraints, constraints back. Next one, it says here dimension number three to two inches. So I'm going to use the sketch dimension constraint and change this to two inches. And then fix circles one and two. So I'm going to use the fix unfix. And I'm going to click on the circle, not the point, but the circle itself. One, two, it turned green. And when you fix something, so let me press escape. When you fix something, that thing does not move. Okay, so it does not move at all. The next um, instruction is to make circle three tangent to one and two. So I'm going to use the tangent. And what happens is that this the curve of the circle will be touching the curve of the circle at a point. So click here and then to the other circle. But I want this also tangent to this circle. So I click here and then I click here. And as you can see, I have it now tangent. So you could also make lines tangent to a circle and then same thing. So let's select tangent. Let me click on this circle first. And then on this line, as you can see, the line now is tangent to the circle. And then I click the circle again and then click on this line. And now both lines are tangent to a point in the circle. All right. Next one is fix point C. So I'm going to use the fix and fix and it says fix point C, which is this one. Okay. And then make endpoints A and B coincident with point C. So let me just double check to make sure that I had this. Okay, it looks like I wasn't able to do it. So one more time, fix and fix. And I need to select that. Okay, so the point is now green. The next thing is to make A and B coincident with C, line A coincident with C. So coincident will, what happens is that two lines or two points will be sharing a point or a line together. So if I click on this point and that point, as you can see that's coincident now, same thing here and then here. Okay, uh, concentric. So here is the concentric constraint. And what's going to happen is if I click on the circles, the circles will now share the same center point, making them concentric. Okay. And then make lines collinear. The collinear would be this. And then what's going to happen is it will make the lines or the objects share a common line. Okay, so if I click here, let's see what happens. And then click here. You'll see that they are in that same angle. I could pull this off. And as you can see, the two will still be collinear. Okay, sharing that line. Okay, so make lines horizontal. So we have the horizontal and the vertical constraint. Whichever the line is 
the angle of the line is gearing towards towards a horizontal or vertical that's what it's going to to do let me undo that so let me click horizontal and then click here this is closer to a horizontal than a vertical so automatically it'll make it horizontal same thing with this one okay well this one's see i still have the tool selected make this lines vertical and since they are closer to being vertical than horizontal whenever you click on lines like this they will just turn vertical okay so this one is to make an equilateral triangle a triangle with the same length of uh, length of line so i am going to select equal and i want these two lines to be equal to this line right here so i click this one first click this as the next line and then click this again and then click the last line as you can see, if you measure that, they'll be all the same lengths. Uh, make the circles the same. Again, this is an equal constraint that you could use. Let's say I want this smaller cir circle to be as big as the big circle. So I click the big circle first and then the small circle. Or if you want to do the opposite, you select the small circle first and then the bigger circle. Okay, line up the centers of the circles on the same horizontal plane. So this is the function of horizontal vertical also. Okay, so to line up the centers of the circles, I'm going to click on horizontal vertical and I want this circle to be um, horizontally constrained with this circle. So let's try that. Click here and then click here. And then I'm going to do the same thing with these two circles. So click here at the center of the circle and the center of the third circle. Okay. And then we're down to the last two. Uh, this one is make the construction line vertical. So we'll make this construction line vertical first. And place the construction line at the midpoint of the top edge of the rectangle. So we're going to select midpoint. And it says here the top line edge of the rectangle. And then click on this. And then you'll notice that that triangle shows up, which means we were able to identify the center of this top edge or of this rectangle. And we have the line uh, line up to the uh, midpoint of that rectangle. Okay, the last one is using equal and also symmetric or symmetry. So first, we're going to make the two circles the same size. Let's say I want it to be this small. So I click this one first and then the second. And then now we'll select symmetry. And you're supposed to select first uh, two objects and then select the line of symmetry. And as you can see, now they're lined up and they're, if I, if I cut this in the middle, you'll see that this is the mirror image of the other side. So there's in symmetry or they're symmetrical. Okay, so once you've done this, as you can see, we've used all of the um, all of the geometric sketches except for the curvature. Uh, the curvature just says that if you have two or more objects to create smooth continuous curvature between them, you just use this. Uh, if we ever get to that, I'll show you an example. But in the meantime, this is all we need. For this assignment, you just need to do a screenshot. Uh, please make an entire screenshot of your screen so that I could see your initials here or your name. So I'm going to mimic it with here in the Mac. And I'm just going to do a screenshot. You have to be still in sketch mode to do this. And then I'm going to upload that screenshot to Google Classroom. 
Okay, that's it for this assignment, activity 1.3.3, .3, constraining a sketch.